Hi everyone, this is Sonu Satyadas. Today we are going to see what is web components and how we can build web com components using this JavaScript frameworks. So according to Mozilla Developer Networks, web component is a suite of different technologies that allow you to create reusable custom elements. So custom elements is something that you can use inside your HTML uh, along with the built-in elements or built-in tags that can provide some functionality. Maybe you want to add some uh, advertisements or image carousel or something like that. So if you want to create a widget or a component that you can reuse in multiple applications in such cases we can build web components so web components will help us to uh, reuse the existing code in different uh, uh, applications uh, that means if you are building an application using uh, vanilla javascript or you are building an angular application or a uh, react application you can use the same web component in all the applications that means it is lang uh, framework agnostic means you don't need to go and uh, create components specific to a particular uh, framework so that is the benefit of using web components for building web components we need to understand primarily four things we can say they are the core technologies required for building the custom components or web components so primarily a custom element a custom element is a javascript api that allow you to define the elements and their behavior so which means you will be creating a javascript class and that class can define all the functionalities that you want to use as a web component and using a custom element you can uh, use that class inside your html uh, web pages another thing is a shadow dom so usually when we use the custom elements inside your web application it sometimes may create a conflict with the other tag elements maybe sometimes you use some styles or some other uh, scripts that may create a conflict with the other uh, uh, part of the application other part of the dom element so in such cases if you want to isolate or you want to create a uh, encapsulation for your uh, custom element then we can create a shadow dom so it's possible for us to create web components without shadow dom but it's always better to create a shadow dom and attach it to the real browser dom to create this web component so that you can isolate your component the style scripts anything that you use inside your web component does not uh, create a uh, conflict with the other part of this application another technology that we typically use is html templates so usually we can define the templates using a template tag inside your html page you can also create slots for uh, defining the segments so you can uh, create the views with the templates and define certain areas of the templates using the slots which you can render inside your custom element so when you define the custom elements you can use the templates that you have defined inside your uh, html page and render the dynamic content inside it the benefit of using the template is uh, it can be uh, uh, reused very easily you don't need to go and type the complete html code inside the uh, javascript and uh, you can also use the es modules which it helps you to import the javascript code 
inside your application so if you want to import and export your application uh, components means inside your application you want to uh, import the code you can use the es module so any specific javascript file you can import as a module so while using the script tag you can simply specify the type as module which means you are going to include the javascript file as a module inside your application creating a custom element is a very easy the first of all you need to go and create a class that is uh, extending the html element base class then you can define your custom element of functionalities inside the class you can uh, uh, define the uh, reactions which means you can simply call as uh, the uh, methods that you can use for uh, defining the code logic uh, uh, the reaction methods also called as life cycle methods of the web components and after you have defined the component you can register that component using the custom elements dot define method so in that method you need to pass a name or custom element name that can be used for calling that custom element so sometime you can say uh, my hyphen counter or my hyphen advertisement or maybe uh, sample hyphen uh, widget any name that you want you can use it's always uh, preferred to use a hyphen uh, in the tag so that you can uh, uh, define your custom elements and uh, uh, with a uh, hyphen that will uh, what give, differentiate your custom element from the built-in elements of your html tags so inside the define method you will be specifying the name of this uh, custom element then the class that you defined and optionally you can specify the name of the uh, base class that your element is inheriting from suppose if you are creating a custom element from the html button uh, element then you can specify the button as the base uh, for your uh, component it's also possible to define a shadow dom so yes you can define your custom elements without using a shadow dom but it's preferred to use the shadow dom if you want to encapsulate the functionality suppose if you want to uh, encapsulate the styles and scripts uh, inside a uh, virtual dom or a shadow dom you can use the shadow dom functionality that can be defined using the element dot attach shadow method so that is going to create a uh, encapsulation for your uh, custom element and you can also define the templates inside your html and you these templates can be used inside your custom elements you can also define the slot where you want to uh, point a particular segment of your template and uh, after you define your custom elements you can use that custom element like any other element of your html inside your html page you can call that custom element with the name that you have given uh, as an as the first argument of the custom elements dot define method so this will render this custom element when you load the web application and uh, the template will appear inside your client or consumer application the custom elements is helping us to create a uh, reusable code for that we have to create a class that is extending the html element as you can see we need to create a javascript class that extend the html element then you can define the functionalities inside the class and finally you need to define the custom element with a name so use the custom elements dot define method 
specify the name of the custom element that you want to use and uh, the name of the class that you have defined then you can use the custom element like any other html tag inside your html page so as you can see here we have the autonomous button yeah, that is defined as a custom element so when you define the custom element it render the class and generates the html code inside your uh, browser dom as you can see we have a very simple html element the simple class that is extending the html element and uh, we have uh, defined a simple logic inside the connected callback uh, uh, reaction which is a lifecycle hook method for uh, components so the inner html of the component is defined uh, with a simple uh, paragraph a welcome message so when we render this custom element inside the browser you can see it generates the output within this body but here is no encapsulation uh, applied for this custom element so the custom elements contents are simply merged with the browser dom elements but we can use a shadow dom that is providing uh, encapsulation for your uh, custom element so you can simply attach the styles and scripts and other functionalities for your custom elements which does not creates any collision with the other script and styles defined inside the application to create a simple shadow uh, dom you can use the attach shadow method and you can also specify the mode value as open or closed whenever we use the closed state the shadow dom is not accessible uh, outside the uh, constructor or outside the uh, component so you cannot access the shadow root using the custom element dot shadow root uh, method so if you use the custom element dot shadow root it will be simply returning null so if you want to make changes inside your custom element then you have to make your uh, shadow dom mode as open and as you can see uh, in the actual dom we can insert the shadow root so in the picture you can see where uh, we are creating a shadow root and attaching some child elements inside it which is then plugged into the actual document uh, that is the actual DOM uh, that is rendering inside the uh, browser. So here is an example for creating a shadow uh, DOM. So when we uh, define the custom element uh, we can create the shadow uh, dom using the attach shadow method so this dot attach shadow with mode is equal to open is going to create a shadow dom and then you can define your other uh, elements maybe suppose if you want to create uh, a template or you you want to define some uh, paragraphs or list or tables and then you can attach this child elements to the uh, shadow root or shadow dom so when you render this uh, custom component as you can see inside the browser's uh, console uh, it is going to create a shadow root uh, which is going to encapsulate the contents of your uh, uh, custom element the templates are simply used for uh, creating some reusable uh, uh, HTML fragments. So inside your HTML page, you can define a template tag that is containing some uh, HTML elements, which can then access the from your uh, custom element, and maybe you can add some dynamic contents inside it. So this template is not going to render 
when you load the page so you have to explicitly activate this template using this web components means from the web component you are going to read the template and then add some dynamic contents inside it and then render this template then only the output of the template will be displayed inside the uh, browser so you can place the templates anywhere inside your uh, html page maybe you can put inside the head section or body or somewhere else so here you can see we can define the templates with an id and you can see inside the template we have an image and div so when we define the custom elements using this query selector we can access the template and then access the elements we defined inside the template uh, individually and make changes into that so you can see we are accessing the template by its id and then accessing the image and changing the image source with logo.png and then we are rendering this template in and appending it as a child inside the uh, uh, custom element inside the document similarly we can also use the es module for loading the scripts uh, that whenever we create a custom element inside a javascript file it needs to be defined as a module so when we uh, include the custom elements javascript uh, inside the application we can define the type as module so that it uh, loads as an es module and then you can simply define uh, or simply call the uh, custom elements within your html page when you define the custom elements or web components you can also define some uh, lifecycle hook methods inside the component class so uh, for defining the code logic you can use the constructor or these lifecycle lifecycle hook methods so the constructor is typically executed when the component is created or upgraded when the connected callback is a, a lifecycle hook method or it's we can say it's reaction that is executed every time when you uh, uh, insert this component inside the uh, browser dom which means a compo when the component is loaded inside the browser dom it execute the connected callback the disconnected callback is executed when the element is removed from the browser dom so you can perform some kind of cleanup actions inside this callback and we also have an attribute changed callback which uh, gets executed whenever the uh, attributes of this custom uh, component or web component is uh, changed so but this is going to execute only for those attributes which are listed uh, under the observed attributes property so observed attributes you can define it as a static property that is going to uh, list the uh, names of the properties that you want to observe so whenever some changes happens uh, to those property values it execute this attribute changed callback and we also have adopted callback which is going to execute whenever the element is moved into a new document means some some other component is going to call the document dot adopt node and then call this element so means moving this element from one component to another component or from one element to another element at that time it is going to execute the adopted callback now we can start a simple demo of uh, web components so let's see how we can create web components uh, using simple javascript for that i'm going creating a folder in desktop let's give a name sample web component and let's open this folder in vs code and now we can 
create a simple JavaScript file. I can give simple component dot js. Inside of this js file, inside of this JavaScript file, we need to create a component class. So simply we can create a new class, class simple, which extends the HTML element. Now, now inside this component, we can create the uh, connected callback reaction connected callback this connected callback we can specify the uh, components uh, HTML content what you need to display inside this component that we can define so this dot inner HTML equal to Simply, I can give a paragraph and say, Welcome to Web Components. Then close this paragraph. So, we have done with the class creation. This is a very simple class. Now, we need to uh, define this custom element that we need to register this custom element. For that, we can use the custom elements.define method. Then we can specify the name of the uh, element, that means what element or what tag you need to use for calling this custom element. So let's give simple tag and then give the class name as the second argument, simple. So we have done with the component registration. To use this component, we need to create a client application. For that, let's create an index HTML page. Inside this component uh, HTML page, I'm going to import the JavaScript file. So script src equal to the simple component dot js now to use this component i can simply call the simple tag element so i have opened and closed the simple tag now we can run this page using a web server so I have installed the live server extension inside my VS Code so I can run this page using this live server. So now we can see the component is rendered and we can see the output inside this browser. If you go to the console, you will be able to see the DOM elements here inside this body it is rendering this simple tag the simple tag is rendering a paragraph inside this browser now we can update the same uh, application or web component with the help of shadow dom for that i can use the constructor instead of this connected callback so I'm use, defining the constructor. Inside the constructor as the first line, we have to call the super, and then we need to define the shadow DOM. So let's shadow root equal to this dot attach shadow, and then we can specify the mode as open. Now we can define a template so for that let template equal to document dot create element and then specify template so this is going to create a template element now we can specify the inner html of the template so template dot inner html equal to the same paragraph we can attach here as well Welcome to Web 
components. Now this template needs to be rendered inside this uh, shadow DOM. So for that, I can say shadow root dot uh, append child. Inside this, I can say template dot content dot clone node with true. Now we are ready with this component with the shadow DOM. It's going to give the same output in the browser, but now this time it's going to encapsulate the components contents within a shadow DOM. So now we have defined the custom element using the same simple tag uh, custom element. And then inside the HTML, we are going to use the same custom element to call the web component. Now let's go and run this page. Inside this browser, we can now see the same output. But this time, when you go to the browser console and expand the DOM, you can see inside the simple tag, it is creating a shadow root. This is the shadow DOM created within this simple tab and inside the shadow DOM you can see the paragraph is added as a template for this web component. Now we can see how we can define the templates inside the HTML page and then add some dynamic contents with the help of that templates. For that, Inside the HTML, I'm going to define a template in the head section. So let's go and define a template tag to give an ID for the template. So I'm just giving my template. Inside the template, I'm defining an H2 element, but I'm not defining the inner content of this HTML, sorry, H2 element. And below, I am defining an image, the source of the image I am not defining which I can add dynamically. The alternate text also I am not defining at this point of time. So this is my template that I have defined. Now I need to read this template and then make some changes to the contents of the template and then render this template with the help of a shadow DOM. So for that, I'm just going to uh, make some changes in this code. So I'm just removing this code. And here I can now read the template. Let's template equal to document dot very selector and then specify hash my template. This will read the template element. Now I need to read the or I need to set the header of the template. So for that I can say template dot content dot query selector and I have an H2 element inside it. So I'm going to set the inner HTML of that H2 element which I can say welcome to components. Now we have an image element inside the template. To read the image element, I can say let image equal to template or content or query selector, then say ing. Then we can set the image source equal to I need to specify the path of uh, an image here. So I don't have any image at this point of time inside this uh, application folder. So I'm going to create a new folder called uh, images. And then I have an image available in desktop, which I'm going to place inside this images folder. 
now you can see I have this uh, logo.jpeg file exist so I can set images slash logo dot jpeg and also I can set the alternate text for the image website logo so I have defined the inner content for the H2 element as well as the uh, image source and alternate text is set. Now, as we can uh, see, we are uh, appending the template contents to the shadow DOM and then defining this uh, simple tag element. So there is no change in the remaining codes. Inside the HTML, we are having this template in the head section and we are simply calling this custom element here. Let's run this code here. We can see the heading as well as the logo is uh, displayed. Now, if you go to the inspect element section, you can see the simple tag is creating a shadow DOM. Inside this shadow, we can see the H2 element is rendered with the uh, message that we have passed. And also you can see the image is rendered with the a logo and alternate text. Now let's understand how the shadow DOM help us to avoid the code conflict. So let's see. Uh, I'm going to add one H1 element inside this uh, page body. So I can simply say web components by Sonu Satidas. So you can see when I render this page, you can see this is the h1 element and it is displayed in black color and this h2 element as well as the image is displayed with the help of uh, a custom element that is the simple tag now i'm going to apply some style for my uh, page body for that i'm going to define a style in the head section so style and then define a class which is my style and say background color is uh, light yellow and the text color I can say dark green so I can apply this my style to the body so I can say class equal to my style now when I run this we can see the entire page content including the custom elements text is also using the style defined inside my uh, head section so the style defined in the head section is applied to the elements which is uh, de defined inside the body as well as the elements defined as part of the shadow DOM. But now I want to apply a style only to certain elements or only to the elements of my shadow DOM or the custom element. So what I can do, I can define the style inside this template itself and I can use the same style in the same class name inside this so i can specify a different back different uh, color so instead of light yellow i can give a different uh, back color something like aqua and the text color i can say red now this my style is defined twice inside this page one is defined inside the head section 
and the other one is defined inside the template. So now the one which is defined inside the template I want to apply to the H2 element. So let's go and call this my style class for the H2 element. Now we can see we have already defined the style inside this uh, head section and we also redefined the style inside this template. So the shadow DOM is going to use the style defined inside the template only because it is going to encapsulate this elements and the style together. So it is isolating the contents for the web components. So now let's run this page. We can see the dark gray color is applied to the text defined outside the component, but the red color is applied to the text defined in, as part of the shadow DOM. And if you go to the uh, browser uh, element, you can see here we have the simple tab. When you expand the shadow DOM, you can see the style defined inside this shadow DOM. The same style you can also see inside the head section. The style, my style is defined as part of the head section as well as the part of the shadow DOM. But the H2 element is applying the style defined inside the template. So because it's giving an isolation for this particular DOM element. Now we can see how we can pass parameters to the custom web components using the attributes. For that, I'm just removing the existing code from the constructor and then declaring two parameters. One is color and setting the default value as black. And another is position and setting its value as left. Then I can create two properties for color and position. So this is the color property. It returns the color variable value. Also, I can create a position property that is used that is used for returning this position attribute value. Then I can attach the shadow dot to this component. This dot attach shadow specify the mode as open. Now whenever we pass the attributes to the color and position uh, uh, parameters or attributes, these values need to be assigned to this color and position uh, variables of this component. So for that we need to use the method attribute changed callback this method is taking three parameters one is attribute name second is old value and the third one is new value so for every attribute value change this method needs to execute for that we have defined this callback method so we will be checking whether this old value and the new value is different if the old value is not equal to new value then i need to assign this value to the attribute so since my attribute name that means the uh, parameter name which is declared inside the constructor and the attribute name which i am using for passing the value is same i can use the syntax to assign the values this dot get attribute 
and then attribute name. So whenever we assign the value to the attributes, it will get assigned to this color and position parameters or position variables. Now, if you go back to the HTML page, I'm just removing this complete uh, style and the templates which we have used in the previous demo. And here for the simple tag, I'm going to pass color equal to maybe I can say blue and uh, position equal to maybe center. So when I pass the values to the simple tag using this means you can see the color uh, attribute value and the position attribute values are passed to the simple tag and when we pass this values it needs to execute this attribute changed callback but this callback method will get uh, executed only if you list the uh, attribute names using a static method So I'll define the static property or you can define it as a method also. Observe attribute. So I can return the list of this observed attributes. One is uh, color and the other one is position. So these are the two attributes that I am uh, using inside my custom element. Whenever the values for custom, sorry, color and the position is passed, it needs to execute this attribute changed callback. Sorry, it needs to be defined as a static property. So you need to use the get method uh, uh, with the static keyword so static get observed attribute which returns this uh, attributes list so now this will execute the uh, attribute changed callback and this new values will be assigned to the variables now inside this connected callback i can define the shadow dom content for that, what I'm going to do inside this HTML, inside this uh, uh, template. So I'm going to define a template first. Template with ID equal to TMPL. And inside this, I'm going to use an H2 element. For this H2 element, I can specify the content as web component demo. So this is my H2 element. So this template I need to display inside the shadow DOM. So for that, first I'm going to read this template content. Let's template equal to this sorry document dot get element by id so i can it's better to use the query selector and i can use hash tmpl then we'll read the content of this uh, template that is the h2 element so let heading equal to template dot content dot query selector then i can say h2 so this is going to read the h2 element and then i can set the style for heading heading dot style dot color equal to this dot color property value and Heading or style or position will do this dot position, and then we can attach this template to the 
shadow dom so this dot shadow root dot append child then we can say template dot content dot clone node and then say true so we are uh, applying the color and position style to the heading using the property values and then attaching the template content to the shadow DOM. Let's uh, run this HTML application. Let's check the console a template dot text content dot query select we this is automatically filled the value so let's template dot content dot query select yes we can see this color is applied and what is this position we have applied a position position value is not applied correctly this is position so this is the attribute that needs to be used here and that is applied to this heading dot style dot position so I think it should come okay let's check with the different style right okay there is some error okay the attribute name for setting the position is text align not the position so that's error so now we can refresh yes you can see the content is aligned to the right now if i go back and uh, change it to center and changing the color to red you will be able to see the red text is displaying on the center of this page thank you for watching the video subscribe my channel thanks